Now, Gary, there's an interesting thing you touched on, and that the future of Australia's political landscape may actually rest on the survival or failure of this net-zero, green, eco-fascist movement, yep. because entire political careers, not just of individuals but also of parties, have been constructed on the whole apocalypse narrative and cheap energy. Now, if this collapses, which it looks very much like it's going to, with Queensland being a forerunner for where it might start to collapse, do you think that will, one, have an impact on, this, on the longevity of the Labor Party and Greens, and two, could it be a way for the Conservative movement to perhaps climb back to leadership? Look, I think the Conservative leadership is needed because it talks about uh, considered change, not just simply change for change's sake. Uh, the Greens are ruining Australia. The Labor Party is letting them get away with it. And unfortunately, there are some elements within the Liberal Party, which I've been attendant to for a lot, lot of my life, most of my life, in one form or another. Uh, the Liberal Party, also some in the Liberal Party, believe that if they pretend they're a bit green, you know, you can't make the colour green without a bit of blue and a yellow streak in it. That's how you become green, right? Blue and yellow, you know, your art. Uh, I, think, I think we run this real risk of endorsing the Greens instead of realising that they're trying to send us back to be cave people. Can't say caveman anymore, Alexandra. You've got to say cave people. So, you know, you just know, you just know that we are living in a very, very perilous state. Now, I heard Jim Chalmers the other week talk in Sydney uh, at a pre-budget function, and he talked about the fact that this is the decade in which all of the changes that are needed for the future will take place. I fast forward a day or two and I heard Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, is almost as incoherent as the President, uh, say exactly the same thing. So the left internationally are on a march trying to convince us that following their direction to change things is the answer. Uh, but what we're doing is we're trading in individual rights, we're trading in individual achievement, we're trading in the way in which, well, frankly, we got to where we've got to now, all off the back of some new false god called climate change. And 0.04% of the atmosphere is sucked out of the tree, out by uh, trees in, out of the atmosphere each night. I mean, the carbon dioxide is not exactly the most, most voluminous part of our atmosphere, but Half and the young people think it's, it's everywhere. It's Well, it is. It's everywhere, but in such small particles, it's ridiculous. We used to learn in school how the carbon would fall out of the atmosphere at night because it actually depends on how the temperature of the atmosphere how much can be absorbed, which is why people call it... Uh, the, it's, a, it's following trends, not driving them, but, you know, no-one's ever learning that anymore. But what I want to ask particularly uh, as a bit of an interesting speculation is can the Liberals, given what we've seen and their desire to win back these inner seats, are they capable of changing course and going to the uh, nuclear energy, as you say, and also just ditching the whole apocalyptic climate narrative in general and carbon taxes in general and all this nonsense because they're upsetting their blue ribbon base, they're upsetting agricultural heartlands? Or are we going to see what happened a long time ago in Liberal history where uh, minor parties perhaps come together and coalesce and form a new majority party, first in a soft coalition, then perhaps as re-emerging themselves as the new Conservative Party? Because that's a possibility in our system and minor parties are on the rise and we are seeing that perhaps the uh, Nationals and a few others might usurp the Liberal Party if they're not very careful. Well, look, maybe, but, you know, that's 80 years ago that everybody bar the country party, uh, the forerunner of the Nationals, joined into that coalition of various parties, Queensland People's Party and up in other organisations around Australia to form the Liberal Party. That's 80 years ago. Uh, I wasn't there. I just want to stress I've just read books about it. But, you know, I, just, I make the point that unless you've got vision, unless you've got ambition, unless you've got some kind of thing for people to get behind... You know, a bit like the old sort of tiki tour concept of follow me, we're going this way, holding up a clipboard and people follow you. Unless we've actually got that kind of leadership, uh, it's going to drift all over the shop. But at the moment, what the left are offering is a continuation of this more command and control, more forms and fees, more bureaucracy and more, I think, decline, managing our decline. And, yes, can they come together? Yes, they can. But if they think that they can... Uh, pretend to be green in some parts and something else in another, well, no, they won't. Uh, but I think the really compelling story, and John Lennon, the late John Lennon said this when the Beatles played at the Royal Albert Hall in the 60s, right? He said the poor people can clap, the rich people can rattle their jewellery, right? So it's a bit of a working-class line. I love it. It's a great line. He also said time wounds all heals. I love that uh, as well. But, uh, 
You know, the thing is that John Lennon was right in, in the sense that the richer people who are affording to vote teal in the inner city out of some sort of bizarre belief that somehow or other they're doing something for the planet are, are actually now going to find themselves paying more for that privilege uh, because the Greens in particular, and the Teals are you know, partners in crime on this, uh, they're looking at further taxes on personal property, first personal income, uh, wealth investment, homes, you name it. We're even now hearing about the definition that our oh, private homes won't be touched, but what is a private home? Is it three bedrooms, one bathroom, or is it five bedrooms for two bathrooms? So the fact that government's actually talking about, oh, we won't tax the family home, but what is a home? Uh, is a home 18 bedrooms and 10 bathrooms? I don't know. The fact that we're having this debate frightens me, and I think that's what we're going to see and hear more of. If the Liberal Party actually says, you can vote for them, but you've got to pay more tax, then I think they'll start to get votes back. They've actually got to tell people, it's a famous radio station, what's in it for me, WIIFM. You've got to actually start to sell people on what's in it for me. And I think nobody's going to vote for more taxes, although maybe some people will. Yeah, well, I actually have a suspicion that the those who are suffering under the new greenish communist regime that's going on, and not just with the net zero, but also digital ID, banning cash, or the misinformation, disinformation laws, there's a whole stack of things that are pushing down yeah. people. I think those people are going to start... They'll be the new Howard's battlers, in a sense, where they need help and there's going to be a market there for politicians to actually latch on to a topic that means something to the people. And we have lost this meaning out of politics recently where yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been a lot of rhetoric and a lot of nice words and a lot of virtue but not a lot of actual on the ground politics that we used to see. So final question Gary, are you oh. looking forward to a bright political future or do you suspect that we've got some really hard slogging to go for, through before we get there? Look, it has to be hard slog because nothing comes easily. If you ask a kid, a child where milk comes from, they'll say from a cow. The next question's got to be asked, and this is just emblematic of where I think a lot of the challenge now is, what, does the cow just walk up to a bottle and squeeze the milk in? No, you've actually got to work the cow to get the milk out. You know, there's actually a process. There's work to be done to achieve a result. And I think it's reasonable to start challenging our kids about that. Now, I've road tested that concept with some, some nieces and nephews, everybody aged between 10 and 15, and they actually said... You're right, hadn't thought about it like that. So I'm feeling like I'm, you know, onto something here. I think it's reasonable to challenge kids about where things come from and how effort gets reward. These are these are virtues, but they're also values. And I think we've got to have political leaders talking that way. Now, I, I personally, because I've known him a long time, I'm very confident Peter Dutton is that kind of guy. Some of his team are a little bit softer, but, you know, I think we've just got to start to eyeball our politicians and say, well, mate, or miss or whatever, uh, what's it all about? Handouts or hand-ups? You know, ways to letting me go and get on with my life or ways of interfering with my life. Uh, I think they're the big challenges and we need all of us to start talking like that. Well, you should know better, Gary, because if you ask a millennial, milk comes from their minimum wage Uber Eats driver who delivers it to their door. That's how you get I milk. I stand corrected. Thank you. OK, all right. See, I've learned something from being well on your program tonight. <laughs> so no doubt about it. Yeah, no, it's really... F I always find it entertaining that the generation that complains about the baby boon was how they had it so easy and how wonderful life has been for them. They're the uh, kids who get dropped off at school and at their functions by their parents and their SUVs. They're the kids who can't be bothered to walk to the corner store to get their lunch. They'd rather have it ordered online and delivered. They don't shop at the grocery store for basic items because they don't make anything themselves anymore. This is the generation that's upset the climate's being killed because we've got plastic in here or something. I mean, who are the main consumers of this plastic generation? Not the baby boomers and their glass milk bottles, their paper bags, which we remember correctly. Correctly. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that, that's what's, you know, crazy to me. 